London, one of the most lucrative property markets in the entire world. Pick this house, for example. In the last two years, it's doubled in value. It was worth £120,000, now £240,000. Well, that's good news if you're selling, but a complete nightmare for first-time buyers. So, how do you get on the property ladder if you've got less money to spend than the average London house price? Well, that's our challenge, to find someone a home here in the city for £100,000. We're professional house hunters, and our job is to make sure the buyer gets the best possible property for the best possible price. Whether you're looking for a loft in the city or a little place in the country, we can track it down. Over the next eight weeks, we'll be finding properties for people who need to move but want a little help. And with only one long weekend to find them the house of their dreams, it's a race against the clock. Kate Pybus is a serial renter and she's worried that she's been left behind by the London property market. Kate is a 28-year-old first-time buyer and works as a copywriter for an advertising agency. She's tried to buy property on two previous occasions but has always got cold feet at the last minute and presently rents in Islington with her brother. This is my brother. He's always on the phone <laughs> and he's on the phone again. She loves her rented flat because it's so convenient for her work and it's got buckets of space. This is a huge, huge room. And if you owned a flat like this, God knows what you could do with it. Put in... Anyway, I don't. This is the um, first ever life drawing I did, which I do love because it reminds me of my mum. It looks like her, even though it's not actually her. Um, and I hope that when I move into this new, this new space, I'll have lots of room to do art and things like that. This is my perfect life, imaginary perfect life. So our first job is going to be a tricky one, to find the same luxuries Kate currently enjoys within her budget of only £100,000. What's your main priority and what you're looking for? Two things, really. It's a combination of location and space. Right. Don't want to be too far from the centre, but I do want to be able to afford enough space to not feel cramped. I like making things like painting and sewing and stuff, so I need quite a bit of space for that. It's all a jigsaw, isn't it, with, yeah. with the yeah. space, the area, and the money. We'll just work with the budget. What, what you can find for the, for the money, we'll, we will find. Good. The area we're starting our search in is Hackney, the cheapest area of inner London. Situated northeast of the city centre, it's an area where bargains can still be found, but not for much longer. Prices in Hackney have risen a whopping 80% in the last five years. That's compared with 40% for the rest of London. Which means that the average price for a two-bed flat in this area is £108,000, compared to a national average of £79,000. The boom in East London began with people who couldn't afford to buy in West London, buying up and converting old warehouses and factories that had been empty for a number of years. And now the property developers have moved in and prices are reaching new highs. Our first viewing today is Digby Works, an industrial building being converted into luxury apartments. Are you really serious this is the building? Yeah, no, yes. no, no, we're dead It's serious. beautiful. Well, let's stop there. It's a beautiful building. We got that far. Fine. <laughs> well, let's we get in there then. Yeah. yeah. Come on, come on, come on. We're looking at a one-bedroom, open-plan studio flat, priced at 132000 It's situated in Hackney and close enough to work for Kate to consider. It's a massive space. Think about how someone would actually use it. If you've got a bed bedroom in that end... Dining. Yeah. Well, what's happening in there? If your dining's in there, what's happening there? TV here, yeah. maybe, and dining down there. What else? Well, that could be a study space. But in terms of aesthetics, it's a nice oh, space. Oh, yeah, in terms of aesthetics, it's a fantastic space. Mm. It's a big space, 813 square feet. I think it's been really badly used. While the asking price is way over Kate's budget, some of these properties are presently unfinished and we're hoping to negotiate that price down. I imagine they're planning to do it up in the same way, but... There's, al there's always a chance to, to sort of do a deal. Yeah. With things like this, you can arrange to do anything. It's all about negotiation. It's all about negotiation. I think yeah. it's beautiful. It's ideal, in fact. It is very, very close to, to something that I would not have imagined I could have got. Really? Good. Yeah. You're happy, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> so am I sensing if we sort out the money, we've got the right place? I'm not going to say that. No. To <laughs> One thing, mm. the agent said to you, do you like them? 
And you said yes, I think they're fantastic. I didn't say fantastic, I said I loved it. Yeah, overly enthusiastic. Yeah, but I was lying. Yeah, well, don't. <laughs> what was I supposed when to it, say? When it, you were supposed to say, go, yeah, mm. OK, mm. yeah, no, not sure, you mm. know. So that when we come to him, if we came to him with an offer, he couldn't say, well, I thought she really liked them, you know, I'm not going to take anything less than the asking price. If you come out of the, the, the flat that you think is... Um, the real one. It's the real one. Yeah. And, and it's the right money. The last thing you should be doing is jumping up and down and going, right. yes, we've got it. Yeah. Come on. If you're viewing a lot of properties, it's a good idea to take photos. At the end of the day, it'll help you discount any definite no's and refresh your memory on the good ones. Although Kate loves Digby Works, it won't be ready to live in for another three months, and she has to move out in one. Add to that the poor room layout, and Digby Works is struck off the list of possibilities. On the way to our next viewing, we spot a sign for a property under development. We decide to stop and ask a few questions. Hi, um, I want to put you for, <laughs> for, you for a couple of moments. Outside my house. Um, we're, we're trying to find Kate a flat or a house in the area, and we just saw a board down there. Wondering if you could just tell us a bit of information or anything you knew about the building. It's very nice. Do you know what was actually sold down the, down the end? I'm not sure, but I think it possibly was the car park. <laughs> this here. Right. Now, this Kate wants to live in the car park, oh, <laughs> which is just here. Um, which has just been sold last week, it went to auction. Yeah. The fact that that parking space has been sold, it just proves what we've been saying all along. Property, any kind of property in London, however small, has got more and more and more expensive to a point where if you've got a very small amount of money to invest, you could actually buy a parking space and it will go up in value. Cleverley's Road is next on the list. It's a mid-terrace, first floor flat with one bedroom. The asking price is 107,000. It's a, it's quite a nice big room with a bay window. Yeah, it is. Have you seen that? There's likely to be quite a big loft up there. Because mm. that could mean you could have a second room. As I mean, and when, I know... as and when finance allows, yeah. yeah, you could expand up into the loft. Thinking of a loft extension. It can add to the value of your property and take care of your expanding family at the same time. A smart idea all round. First, measure the space available, making sure you have the headroom required. Secondly, lofts need stairs, so make sure there's enough floor space to fit a set in. And finally, you need planning permission. Check with the neighbours. If they didn't get it, you won't either, and you could be sorry. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. It's a huge bathroom. It's a big bathroom for the flat. That's yeah. a lovely bathroom. It's beautiful. These, yeah. these windows are here as well. I think this is a reasonably good size yeah. one bed. The bedroom's big, the sitting room's a good size, yeah. the kitchen you can eat in. There's a really big bathroom with a window, and there's this lovely room with a bay window. So, Cleveley's Road is perfect in terms of space, rooms, and character. The ability to expand into the loft means that it rates very highly in the investment stakes. But the journey time of over one hour to work means that Kate discounts the flat immediately, and so our search continues. The next property is Arcadia Court, perfectly situated just one minute away from Liverpool Street Station. At 120,000, it looks expensive for a one-bed apartment, so it needs to be something special. Such a little oasis. Living room. That mirror is making it seem a lot bigger. Know, yeah, it's it a nice is, size isn't it? room. Yeah. It's featureless. But lovely. But lovely and Totally light. different feel. It's not cluttered, which no. makes it. But the outlook at that window, you yeah. could, it's just fantastic. When you've got a lot of hanging space, built in hanging space, yeah. you don't need. Any extra furniture? Good. Well, that's so that's useful something that you were looking for me. For, yeah. Isn't it? yeah, I mean, given that this flat is at the top end of your budget, yeah. you haven't got anything extra to spend on things like putting yeah. in. This yeah. is small. This is small. Yeah. But you've got enough work surfaces. No, you've you got a lot of storage. You couldn't you? need you've got... them here. No. 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 This is not. That's why that table's in the sitting room. Yeah. It's a very nice well, flat. Well, she sat at home. <laughs> she sat down, <laughs> making stuff at home. It's, it's a very a nice flat. News. It's a good flat. Mm. A good Try to discover all you can about why the property is on the market. 
Knowledge is bargaining power, and in a seller's market, you need all the help you can get. I've just had a word with the agent. Yeah. Um, he's leaving because he wants a bigger place. Right. But importantly, he's found a bigger place, and he's made an offer on a bigger uh, place, uh, which he can't proceed with until, until he has he this under offer. Oh, right. uh -huh. Kate, what is the maximum you could afford? I don't really think I can afford 120. What could you afford? Uh, possibly 110. How much you can afford is relative to how much yeah. you want this place. Yeah. And perhaps we should be thinking about not how much you can afford, but how much you like it. Another great thing about Arcadia Court is its roof terrace. We've just been talking about buying outside space and houses with gardens, flats with roof terraces. There's always going to be less people in the market for that sort of thing through the winter months. Can be an idea, buy a, a house with a garden or a flat with a roof terrace in November and December and sell it again in, in the spring or in the summer. By buying something where there isn't the demand for the outside space and selling it when there is, you can make yourself good money. Just look at those really, really modern flats. Yeah, I think that might set you back a bit more than you <laughs> God knows what that flat's worth. I mean, it must be more than a million pounds. Mm. Way more than a million yeah. pounds. Best location you could possibly ask for. OK. Good. Onwards. Kate likes Arcadia Court. The journey to work is short, and she feels the location is perfect for her. The building has character, and it's one of the few flats we've seen with any outdoor space. And despite the rooms being on the small size, she's starting to think about raising her budget. This is where taking photos comes in handy. We've only seen three properties and already Kate has to make decisions. And that was the first one. I like it, um, but no, no, I've got to, got to scrub it. Okay. I'm not going to buy it, so. That um, was possibly. the second one. It sort of feels like um, it's a bit of an older person's, or it's sort of a, it's a slightly suburban road. Mm -hmm. This is Arcadia. I really like this one. Love it because it's so central, yeah. urban. Um, I just liked it. Well, um, we've got some more things to see, so uh, think about what you've seen so far and let's yeah. go home. After the break, we find Kate's dream flat. It's Peter from Phillips Estate. Hi, Peter. Hi. How did you get on? Have you spoken with the vendor? But can we get her offer accepted? It's our second day flat hunting with Kate Pybus, who has 100,000 to spend on a one or two bedroom property in East London. After yesterday, Arcadia Court is the front runner. It fits the bill in every way, but at 120,000, it'll need some hard negotiation to get the right deal. Our first property of day two is Gould Terrace. On the market at 90,000, it's a one bedroom split level flat above a shop in Hackney's High Street, an area that Kate likes. The bus that runs right outside her window would take her to work in less than an hour. Oh, a lovely rooftop view. Oh, this is lovely, lovely room. I love attic rooms. Be very happy here. Yeah. I can see no. myself lying down on a bed here. Yeah. yeah very it's nice. It's a really yeah. nice, huge bedroom. This is horrible. Okay. It's horrible. This kitchen is horrible. Yeah. It needs completely redoing. Yeah. We spotted this. And it's a, it's a patch of damp. Now, this has obviously been recently repainted, this house, and it's already come through. Now, if you have a look at the window, yeah. look up there to where the damp might be coming through. Do you see the top of the building in that far corner? Yeah. It's not in very good nick at all. It's been patched up a couple of times. Oh, God. Oh, dear. What? What's wrong? Well, it's not necessarily <laughs> a downside, but look. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, there's a big light. There's a street lamp. Yeah, I mean, it would never be dark in this room. Someone's come in here, repainted it, tidied it up, spent a bit of money on it, and they've made it quite seductive. But I think it may be hiding a multitude of sins. We're going to the high street to see what shop the property is over. This could be a potential deal breaker. It's actually above a baker's shop. If Greg's the baker's were to close, that unit itself, forget yeah, who's in yeah. it, that unit it could be has permission yeah. for A3 use. So if that was to move out, you could end up with a curry house or a fish and chip shop. If you look at the whole terrace, it's just this section which is yeah. in such bad repair. And there's that great big light. And the light is huge. It's huge. It? But also above the great big light, there's a great big plant sticking yeah. out of your roof. A call through to the council to check the usage, to check who owns the usage. 
and to generally investigate what's going on in the local mm. area would be a very good thing. Although Kate likes Gould Terrace, the answers to our questions Great. are not Thanks. reassuring enough for it to be on her shortlist. <laughs> Empire Wharf is a modern block which promised a view over a park and a canal. However, the flat we viewed was on the wrong side of the building and looked out over a main road. She hated it. It doesn't have the views as we were, yeah. as we thought it did, so yeah. we're on. OK, on to the next thing. Kate liked the Art Deco style of the Strand. It was well situated for her journey to work and had two bedrooms. Fingers and toes. But for 125,000, the flat was small and airless and made her feel claustrophobic. So your first impressions of the building were obviously the building is beautiful, very encouraging. But I don't like that. OK, why was feel, that? feel trapped. So nothing today has appealed to Kate. Arcadia Court is still her first choice, and with only two days left, it's looking more inviting by the minute. It's day three. Overnight, Kate has decided that Arcadia Court has real potential and asked us to arrange a second viewing. Hello, can I help? Hello, yeah, um, my name's Phil. Um, I'm ringing about 42 Arcadia Court. And Sarge showed us the flat on Saturday. Yeah. She's very interested in the flat. Right. Um, wondering, uh, A, is it still available? Uh, we did actually take an offer on that one yesterday. So there's one offer on the table? Yep. Are there any other flats available in the building? Because she's very keen on that block. Right, no, they, we did have one other, but that one's going ahead on the sale now. They've got another offer on the table. It has been accepted. It's been accepted. With Arcadia Court out of the running and nothing else in the frame, the race is on to gather new details and arrange more viewings. While I'm on the phone to agents, Phil is out on the street, looking out for skips, scaffolding and other signs of building work. Property with work in progress may be coming on the market in the near future. So if you see any builders, don't be shy. Stop and ask them about the property. You never know, it might be for sale. There's a big skip there and a, what looks like a mansion block covered in scaffolding. Hello? The London market's a fast one. On average, one-bedroom flats are going under offer within three days, an exchange of contracts occurring within two weeks. No, we drew a blank, I'm afraid. Although, seeing that... We could be a bit late. Bargains can only be found by being proactive. There's another one we've missed. So get out there and find properties before estate agents get their hands on them. You could find yourself saving thousands of pounds. Sale agreed. I don't think we'll be seeing that flat on the market for another five years, so that's another missed. It's the morning of the fourth and final day. If we're going to achieve our goal, we need to get moving. Prince George Road is the last hope. At 105,000, it's only marginally over Kate's original budget and has plenty of room. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Once inside, we can see that this flat is good value. The kitchen makes a great first impression. Lovely sunny kitchen. Yeah, lovely. Very nice and bright. The bedroom's a decent size and has been well presented for viewing. Somebody's cleaned, they've cleaned the windows, which is... Not good sign. Yeah, did good you sign. notice I didn't do that when you came into my house? Do you remember that other house we where saw you, the Where loft? the stairs would be hard to put in? They'd yeah, be easier yeah, they'd be here, much they? easier here. You just build yeah. them straight up. Yeah, much easier here. Yeah, there's plenty of room to put in another flight. Yeah. Which yeah. would give you your second bedroom. Yeah. yeah. And possibly another bathroom. The attic appears to have the potential to be converted, giving Kate the investment potential she desires. But the real selling point of this flat is its large, bright living room. And, and the corner sink has gone. But it's a nice bright area. Yeah, room. but you could easily reinstate that fireplace and slap some corner sink back up. It's 105,000. No, I think it's a great this flat. This is an 85-year lease. It's a great flat. Um, you've got the option of the second bedroom, as and when money easily and accessible. money I think, are out. Uh, I think it's worth looking at transport again. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because this is another no tube bus route. Having spoken to the vendor, we discover that an offer has already been made on this house, but not yet accepted. I'm on the phone to London Travel Information to find out if Kate could get to work within one hour. So we've got a journey time of 45 minutes. Sorry, what was that? Plus 10 waiting. OK. OK. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Okay. Prince George Road has got the lot, space, character and the potential to convert the loft. However, someone else agrees and with another offer on the table, it looks like this one's going to the wire. 
So while Kate ponders her choices, let's see what else is on the market for £100,000. How about a tower house with extensive views and 10 acres of land in County Cork? It's in need of complete refurbishment, but it's well-priced at 110000 If you like the idea of playing the country square, take a look at the 16th century Ravenstone Castle, which has 34 acres and the possibility of a barony title. Offers over 100000 please. If you like your challenges a little less daunting, then the old school close to York could be for you. It has a large entrance hall, three classrooms, an office, WC and changing rooms, all for the asking price of 100000 If you have more to spend, how about an apartment in the Grade 2 listed old stable yard near Kendall? A ground and first floor property here could be yours for 145000 But if you're looking to spend less, then you could move to Glasgow's West End into a two-bedroom, one public room property smack in the heart of the city. Offers over 68500 please. Time's up. With no more viewings to do, it's decision time. Having already lost Arcadia Court to a faster buyer, Kate knows she has to act quickly. We headed to a quiet bar to think things through. Because Prince George's Road. Yeah, this is my favourite, definitely. A clear favourite? Yeah, definitely. Lovely, homey feeling. Um, while I would never have thought of Stoke Newington before, I think it's quite nice. Mm -hmm. It's um, the one. You think that's the yeah, one? Yeah, I'd like to put in an offer. So what offer do you suggest? Well... Um, mm. Mm. If the other offer has been very close, and yeah. it, supposing it's 103, 104, I don't like offering an asking price as an opening bid. Professionally beer. speaking, yeah. no It's way. not good yeah. practice. No. If we go in at 103, if that matches the old offer or beats it or is underneath it, I think his immediate reaction will be to say so. I think he'll say, well, they've already had an offer 103 and they turned it down. Mm -hmm. In which case we'll know immediately mm -hmm. within the same conversation that we can offer 104. But every penny counts of in course. this situation. Every penny. And if we could just, you know, save Kate just a thousand pounds off the asking mm. price, that's a thousand pounds worth of mm. interior decor, so sudden, the you know. And the legals. Yeah. If we went in at 103 and he says no, we say, yeah. well, look, that's really at the top of our budget. Yeah. On the condition that we have this exclusive and you meet our time scales, then we'll go to 104 or 105. It could be a nice way of adding in those conditions. So this is where I really don't want to lose it. If you want this, we'll get it for you, Kate. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That's all I want to hear. I yeah. do want it. <clears throat> <Let me disappear. laughs> Ability safe. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Could I speak to Peter or Ian, please? Uh, Ian speaking. Ian, hi. My name's Phil Spencer. Yeah. I'm uh, acting on behalf of Kate Pybus. Right. She, she'd like to put forward 103,000. Right, okay. Are you able to give me an indication of where we're at um, as opposed to the other offer that, uh, that's lurking? I mean, that, that's something that I can't really, um, you know, right. divulge. I would, I would firmly recommend that this, this, this offer um, you would firm, you, you would firmly recommend would, this I, offer? Yeah, I would, yeah. Excellent, that's very kind. All right, lovely. Speak to you later. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Well, there we go, people. 103 gets his recommendation. Fingers crossed. That's unlucky Hello. Hello, is that Phil? It is, yes. Hi, yeah. Uh, it's Peter from Phillips Estates. Hi, Peter. Hi. How did you get on? Have you spoken with the vendor? Yep, we've spoken to them and they've agreed to 103. They've agreed. Excellent yep, they'll news. Take that. Thank you very much for your help, Peter. Pleasure. Very good news. All the best. Thanks. Uh, Bye. Bye. <laughs> guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Look. No, especially. Oh, just in case. Can I do it? Can I do it? Yeah, you do it. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, always wanted yeah, to do this, Kirsty. At the moment, Kate's house purchase is proceeding normally and she hopes to complete soon. So we're off to a great start. Join us next week for more house buying antics. What will be, will be. Oh my god. Here we go. <laughs> we're going to know now. Wait a minute now. This week we're in Bolton with £60,000 to spend and four days to find a house. As usual, the pressure's on. Neil and Susan Derbyshire live in Bolton with their two sons, Daniel and Luke. They sold their old house a month ago and have generously moved out into the caravan so that the new owners can move in. 
With a budget of 60000 they're after a three-bed semi. They're not afraid to do some work to a property so long as the price reflects this. But the house must have a private drive. The caravan is coming with them. We're looking for a house that we can stay in at least till the boys have left home. There's definitely a garage to put the motorbikes in and all my, my tools and equipment. In our old house, the boys had their own rooms. It were a three-bedroom semi. We'd like it to be uh, local to the children's school and their jobs. We've just been there 13 years and we've done everything to that house we felt we could do and we just fancied a change or a challenge. So we've got to find room for three bikes, a couple of cars, a van, a dog, a couple of budget cars, two small boys and Neil and Susan. Lying in the heart of the Pennines, just 12 miles north of Manchester, the Derbyshire's hometown of Bolton has a long industrial history, stretching back to the 13th century. The main focus of the town is Victoria Square, which is dominated by the impressive town hall, giving a clue to Bolton's wealthy past as a major centre of cotton manufacturing. Whilst the average price of a terraced house in Bolton is £36,000, less than half the national figure of £75,000, the areas to the northwest of the city where Neil and Susan are looking have seen property prices increase between 10 and 15% over the last year alone. Having already sold their house, the Derbyshires are getting left behind. We are really quite desperate because we feel that Susan and Neil were badly advised. They should never have got out of the marketplace when it's such a steeply rising market. It was very good of them looking after their purchase. It was of very it. honourable, but it's not wise. No. no. So a real challenge this week. We've got to find the Derbyshire's a bigger house than they had before, but for less money because of the rising market in Bolton. We're here at 130 Thornham Drive. It's a really nice area, isn't it? It is, What's yeah. your first impression yeah. from the outside? Very nice. It's an area we've, we've looked at, yes, an area we've wanted to move to. Well, let's see what the inside's like. Okie doke, let's go in and check the inside. Oh, okay. on. Thornham Drive is on the market for £67,000. It's surrounded by quiet streets and is in a good area of Bolton. There's a garage for the bikes, a drive for the caravan, and rooms for all the family. It is, isn't it? Similar, like ones, similar isn't style, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Very similar. This is obviously an extension at the back. Yeah. And it's been built on, so you've got a separate kitchen and dining room. But are you OK right. with a kitchen that you can't eat in? Yeah. That's OK. Yeah. That's I can fine. eat in front room. He's spotted it. <laughs> <laughs> the garden's very small, isn't it? Yeah. The, the garden's very small. small. Yeah. yeah. Downstairs feelings are a little bit too cramped for a yeah. family house, isn't it, really? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's the same thing. It's location, location, location. You're paying more to be in this really good location yeah. and you're ending up with a smaller, smaller house. Property, yeah. 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 Must have been a very small house before the extension was put on. Yeah. You know what? Even if you did knock down the wall and you opened it up and made it open plan going up the stairs... That's what our no, old house were like. Yes. Yeah. I still think that it would be too small. Yeah, I get the feeling it's enclosed yeah. in, yeah. yeah. You're just swapping one house very so similar, similar to yeah. another. Is you it know. worth going upstairs? Well, I think we've uh, seen enough from downstairs, yeah. really, to yeah. make up our minds on the property. Yeah, yeah. fine. Thornham Drive's location means you get less house for your money. It's too cramped for a family of four and the long, thin drive is no good for Neil. With the caravan parked up, he wouldn't be able to get to the garage. While we were going round the estate agents, we picked up details of this house. Everything looked good. It was three bedrooms, detached, garage, right sort of money. What on earth could be wrong, we thought? But all is not well. This vast electricity pylon behind me was not included in the estate agent's details. Clever photography meant that it was kept out. Just remember, the details are a jumping off point. Don't leave the house without asking key questions. The Property Misdescriptions Act came into force in 1993 and should have put paid to the use of misleading language describing a property. But you may still find yourself looking over particulars that are a little flowery. Be wary of certain phrases. Full of character. Close to local amenities. Good access. Cosy, easily maintained garden. And the most common of all, has potential. Keep your wits about you. Yesterday, when we were pounding the streets of Belton, going in and out of the estate agents, Neil and Susan were in the car having a drive round. They drove past this and they saw the sign 
They came back and told us about it last night and we rang up this morning and we made an appointment for us to see it. But it was them being just as proactive as us and they found the house. The house in Mendip Close is ideal for the caravan. Only one in 40 houses in Bolton have a plot of land this size attached. The question is, will it be ideal for Neil and Susan? Small kitchen. It's a small kitchen and it's, and it needs re, redoing. Unfitted um, kitchen. <coughs> unfit for site wallpaper What's too. Yeah. But if you didn't need to eat in your kitchen, this probably would be big enough, wouldn't it? Don't be frightened by a house that needs some attention. If you have the imagination to see the property's potential and are not afraid of the work, it could offer you a great opportunity to save a few quid. Hmm. Bathroom, small, compact. Could do with tidying up, could do with cleaning up. Mm -hmm. It's a very small bath. Much the same as the kitchen, it just needs a good old... You could get rid of that. Can you get rid of that? Yeah. You could fit a shower in there, or just have a bigger bath. No, no, but... It's, it's weird, it's like the bathroom and the kitchen, that it is priced at 50 and not at 60. Um, I don't think there's 10 grand to spend, so... Fingers crossed. Looks like he was planning to do work. He's done the double glazing, he's done the roof, he's done this room. It is one of those houses where the oh, onus is on you oh. to add the value. Yeah. Yeah. We it, prefer it, to do work on property. Done it before. I mean, we had a word with the again. agent, and she reckoned that this would be worth late 50s, early 60s if mm -hmm. it were done up. Yeah. It's very quiet. There's no traffic coming down. No, we're in no. a cul de sac. Yeah, we, oh, we're at last one, we're a cul-de-sac, yeah. We're quite apart from yeah. the boys somewhere down the stairs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my Rick. Rick. Um, We've been standing here getting a move on because there was another viewing at quarter past three on this house. Oh, no. It turns out that Susan's sister is viewing this house. She didn't know that Susan was here. Susan didn't know she was coming. We got and we've been really first. worried about the other person coming to view the house. <laughs> They're going to come and say hello. It's no good. You probably will. You won't want it. You won't believe it. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> and we were dead worried about what the quarter to three person. Uh, what happens if you're wanting the yeah, same yeah, house? Well. I mean, you were here first, weren't you? Oh, well, yeah. It's going to cause a family argument, then. No, oh, she's not like that. <laughs> I am, but she's not. <laughs> <laughs> no. Mend It Close certainly isn't the Derbyshire's idea of a perfect house but they can spot a bargain when they see one. In good condition, we reckon the house would be worth an extra £11,000. But we've got one more viewing today, so we leave Mendip Close and Susan's sister behind as we head off to neighbouring Ramsbottom. Our next property is in Grants Lane, a quiet cul-de-sac away from the main roads. It has a garage as well as parking front and rear. Nice big kitchen. Quite different. Again, it's not fitted. Kirsty's trick is always to um, put your hands behind the units. If your hand goes down, it's not a fitted kitchen. Chances are it'll be removed when What's the people it say sell it. What's the details? It's, uh, kitchen, electric cooker point, gas cooker point. Yeah. Um, important point is that if it says you've got plumbing for it or a point for it, it means it won't be there yeah. when you move in. It, uh, it's just got a nice it has a, feel. It has it. a more mm. feeling than any kitchen we've seen. I, I worry this would become a corridor if you, you couldn't set up a table. No. Well, Although, if saying. you're having people round, perfect. But in, in normal run of family life, even if you put a table back there by well, the double by doors, the you wouldn't be able to get past You're not going to be wanting to go outside in a hurry. No. See, look, there's no garden to speak of out here, really. There's certainly no room for the boys to kick a ball around. And look at this. There's an awful sound of breaking glass. This is a danger to life and limb out here. Builder's yard. Mm. Kirsty would usually say, don't buy it. It would be um, soon to be developed into houses. Well, I think it would I'd be rather, better if it were developed <laughs> yes, into houses. It would houses be much better if it was mm. houses. That's, um, the house is on the market at 57,000. We haven't been upstairs yet. Three beds, one bath, they say. Reasonable size downstairs, but with a small garden. 57 already begins to look expensive. It's priced as a family house. I wouldn't be willing to spend money on a property like this. No. no. I think we'd better get an offer on in that last one we just viewed. Yeah. No gas gas, it'll be gone. Yeah. <laughs>
Good, good ones are scarce. And yeah. We should move quickly. The in-laws love to eat it. It's an emphatic no for Grants Lane, but a resounding yes for Mendit Close. Unfortunately, they're not the only ones interested. 9.30, end of day two, hotel reception. We have an extraordinary situation happening in the hotel bar just behind us. Do you remember Susan's sister that turned up at the Mendip house? Amazing coincidence in itself. They've now turned up late at night in the hotel bar to try and talk Susan and Neil out of buying the Mendip house because they want it. They went off to see something else and they've arrived to say, the other house, much better for Susan and Neil, much more suitable. This is Neil on the edge of making an offer. Sister trying to talk out of it. Family rivalry I've heard of, but this is something else. I don't know what's going to happen, but we've got to get it for Susan and Neil. They really want it. We're going to get it. After several hours of secret discussion without us, Pauline agrees to let Susan and Neil have first shot at Mendip Close. In return, Susan and Neil agree to view the house that Pauline is recommending. Still to come, our sisters meet again, but are these tears of joy or tears of sadness? <laughs> Find out after the break. Susan, Neil and Kirsty are in the house behind us. This is the house that Susan's sister has portrayed as the carrot to lure them away from Mendip Close. Susan's sister rang up at 8 o'clock this morning to say they were, in fact, going to make a bid on Mendip Close. At £57,995, Strathmore Road is in the budget, but there's no room for the caravan here, so it should be out of the running straight away. However, the house is in very good condition, with a number of surprising bonuses, like a separate utility room and a good-sized garage. I seem to get a better feeling for this property than actually what I did for Mendip yesterday. Yeah, really? No. Yeah. Sue's grinning from ear to ear. Look at her. She's Look, she's grinning from ear to ear. I think Sue's oh. just relieved. <laughs> oh, could that be Stephanie? Stephanie is the agent for Mendip Close, Stephanie. the property we're battling Sue's sister for. I'm very well, thank you, very well. Well, I'd like to put in an offer. Do we still want to put in? Um, but it's going to come with a condition of... Hang on, Kirsty's just saying something. I think we need to think again. S Stephanie, can I ring you back in um, three minutes? Okay, bye. Thank you. Bye. Can we just go upstairs in this one? Let's have Don't a look at the bedrooms. Don't you think we need to get this offer in? No, we need to look at the bedrooms of this house. We may not want Which to offer make... on Mendip Close. If we're going to go with Mendip, we need to do it in five minutes' time yeah. and and secure it. You'd rather have this one, would you? Well, it's more more fun, more fun with fun practical, one. isn't it? Yeah. OK, we'll go with this one, then. Well, can we just finish off? Upstairs. Yeah. The rest. Let's go and have a look upstairs. Neil seems sold on this house, and upstairs there are no nasty surprises waiting for him. There's plenty of space for the family to grow into. Amazingly, Susan's sister might have been right. But what about the sacred caravan? At the end of the day, are you saying that you definitely prefer this to mend it close? Definitely. Yeah. Despite the fact that you may have to wait in the caravan a number of months in order to get this yeah. house. Sun's shining. The <laughs> sun's shining. <Okay. laughs> I must say, I'm really, really pleased that the caravan has become a side issue. Yeah. How many times a year do you use the caravan? Four or five, max. Does it make you think that four or five times is... Not re re really relevant to us in the house, no. is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing we always say. Never be too rigid when you're looking for a house. Be as flexible as you possibly can be. By being too rigid, you could be knocking something out of the picture, which would be the ideal home. Strathmore Road had only two viewings in 67 days, despite being a really good buy. We were puzzled until we saw the particulars. The photo really doesn't do it justice, and there's little mention of the large rear garden. It sounds obvious, but always check the details that the agent provides for your house. We're about to go into the estate agents to make an offer on Strathmore Road. We know the asking price is 57995 and agree to go in lower at 52000 We decide to call their bluff on the Derbyshire's budget. And guess what? I get to play tough cop. We've just come from seeing Strathmore Road, which you're marketing, and we'd like to submit an offer. 
Right. And um, what sort of offer would you think of? We'd like to offer you 52,000. Right. Judging from the research that we've done and the other things that they've seen, we feel that that is as much as the house is worth. It doesn't fulfill every one of their needs. They have a caravan and that is a major issue for them. In purchasing this house, they will not be able to store that car. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're under a little bit of time pressure, and yes, they'd like to offer 52, but we would also need an answer as soon as you can. Right, well, what I could do, I'll take the details that I need to know from you mm -hmm. um, and ring the owner straight away. Are you able to confirm that the fact that they're not coming in to speak to your financial advisors, that that will not in any way affect the status of their offer. And would a, a letter from a solicitor and a, and a sort of mortgage promise from their bank be sufficient? Possibly, but to be honest, we do like you just to come in and have a chat, because we're not trying to push something on you. No. But we do like to check, just that you're in a position to, to proceed, that's all. If the offer of 52 is not acceptable, then there's no point in going back anyway. OK. They do really want this house. 52 is all that there is. So 52, that, that's the maximum you can go up to. Yes. Phil's hard bargaining may have raised a few eyebrows and we don't expect the offer to be accepted, but it will give us an opportunity to introduce other conditions of purchase with any further offer. The one thing that's troubled both of us, I think, is the number of times estate agents have suggested that we see, or Neil and Susan see, their financial advisors. A number of estate agents are linked to people who provide mortgages. If you're going into a estate agent before you've arranged your mortgage, be very careful about giving them your financial details. And our advice is never go to the estate agents until you've sorted out your mortgage yourself. You shouldn't be looking for a house until you are aware of your financial status. With an offer in on Strathmore Road, we all head back to the hotel to meet Susan's sister and give her the good news. Last night when you came up here and you, you said you wanted to go for Mendit Drive, yeah. we were actually in the proceed to put in an offer in ourselves. Um, but you mentioned another property that you'd seen in Strathmore Road that you thought might suit us better than Mendit. Yeah, yeah. So today we've been out and we've viewed that property and we've decided that we'd sooner go for Strathmore and you can amend it. Yeah. 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 Are you sure? Are you sure? I thought you crying for. Are you sure? Yeah. We got a more of a feeling when we walked in Strathmore. Yeah, I, got, I got a real feel for the place. It's a lovely place. Yeah. 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 Something I didn't get when I walked in Mendip. Yeah. Done us a favour there. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so can we go for Mendip? No. Yeah. You can put your offer in for Mendip. Maybe these lads will help you. <laughs> yeah. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Well, where are we, Kirsty? It's the end of day three. It's been a you very might well confusing ask. day. I don't know who we're bidding for and scarcely which house we're after. <laughs> no, it's not so bad. The way to do it is to remember that the house with the nice garden, Strathmore, Strathmore Road, Road, is the house that Neil and Susan have decided they want. We went to the agent, we put an offer forward of 52,000. The asking price is nearly 58. 58. Tomorrow we're likely to be rejected on the 52. The next step is to increase that to 55 and try and impose a time restriction on, it, on an exchange of contracts so Neil and Susan know that they have a house to move into. But the other thing is that after a very tearful meeting between the two sisters, Pauline and Susan, Pauline now knows that Susan isn't going to go for Mend It Close, which means she can go for it. We've tried to get hold of Stephanie, but not surprisingly, at gone six on a Sunday evening, she's not open for business. I don't blame her. No. But in the morning, we're going to try and put forward an offer at 48,000, which is just below the 50,000 asking price. I think they'd accept that. Yeah, I think that's a good offer. So it looks like at the end of day three... On day four, we might get offers agreed on two houses. Two houses for two sisters in a very sunny Bolton. Day four, and we await news on our offer for Strathmore Road. Um, I just oh, had Roxana on the yeah. telephone. Yeah. 
Um, obviously your bluff about they haven't a penny more than 52,000 didn't quite work because mm. they have turned down 52. You thought they would turn down. Yeah, we thought they would turn around 52, particularly in view of the face that Susan made when you said, no, they can't go higher than 52. <laughs> so what do we do now? This is the question. Well, why don't we go in at 55 and a half and see what happens? I get on the telephone and raise Neil and Susan's offer for Strathmore Road to a more realistic £55,500. Whilst I get news that will interest sister Pauline about the offer on Mendit Close. But for now, let's leave Sunny Bolton to see what you can get for 60 grand in different parts of the country. If 19th century elegance appeals, what about this two-floor Victorian maisonette in Victoria Place, Newport? With two bedrooms and off-street parking, this uptown property could be yours for only £63,500. On a clear day, you can probably see the Blarney Stone from this charming two-bedroom cottage near Bantry, County Cork, on the market at £60,000 English pounds. Keen swimmers will be diving for this three-bedroom semi in Northwich, Cheshire, within splashing distance of the local swimming bath. Yours for only £59,950. Golfers might be teed off to miss this stone-built terraced house in Bonner Bridge, Sutherland, right next door to the world-famous Royal Dornoch. Offers over 58000 please. Finally, if you fancy something modern, make the move to Harleston, Norfolk, where an extra £950 over your 60k will get you three bedrooms plus two car parking spaces and a garden, all conveniently situated for the centre of town. With our four days up, Kirsty and I left Bolton, but the following day we had news. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> what will be, will be. Oh my god. Here we go. <laughs> we got another day. Wait a minute now. <laughs> Oh, Neil speaking. Neil, hi, Phil here. Hi, uh, Phil. What they have said is that they would very much like to accept your offer of 55,500. Yeah. They can't promise the three week time scale. I'm saying it, it's, it's completely out of the question the three weeks. What I proposed was that they went on holiday for two weeks. Um, the property was withdrawn from the market. Nobody else gets to see that property and a sold board goes up and, and the picture is taken out of the window of the estate agents. Yeah. And we have a six week exchange of contracts. There's good news about uh, getting the sold sign up and getting the sold sign right. off the market. Yeah. Have they agreed to that? Yes, yeah. they have. That yeah, I pushed quite hard yeah. for, for that to happen. Excellent. <laughs> thanks, Neil. Okay, thanks a lot for ringing. Cheers. <laughs> All the best. Bye. Bye. Well, yeah. they've accepted the offer. And they're going to take it off the market. Oh, God. Very good. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah? Yep, yeah. excellent news. Brilliant. Very relieved. Yeah? yeah. At least we know we've got an home to go to. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be leaving that field sometime this year. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you worried about Neil and Susan's precious caravan, we found them this site. It costs £130 to store the van all year and it's 10 minutes out of town. I think that's a very good deal and everyone will be happy. I think that's a very good deal and at least we've managed to find Neil and Susan something. We've turned from professional house hunters to finding homes for caravans. <laughs> Tonight on Location, 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 we're in Bristol on the search for the perfect Victorian love nest for our couple, Nikki and Paul. We're looking for two bedrooms, a garden for barbecuing and, if possible, a den, all for the sum of £100,000. Sounds tough? Even we weren't prepared for what was to happen. I'm, I'm a bit stunned. Two hours out of London and you're in Bristol, the largest city in the southwest. Bristol can be many things to many people. Essentially, it's a multicultural, cosmopolitan city with one of the best music and club scenes in the country. 
It's the ideal home for this week's couple, Nikki and Paul. They've rented a flat together for four years. Well, along with Paul's mates. I find I end up doing all the tidy. And these lads we live with, lovely as they are, they, uh, you'll find beer cans everywhere. No one thinks to do washing up and cleaning the bathroom. I think I've got you boys to do it once in the last two years since you lived here. We made here. a good job, really. You made a palaver out of it. It was, it was an afternoon event. <laughs> Nikki and Paul are after a two-bedroom house with a garden big enough for Paul and his mates to barbecue in. Ideally, it would be a Victorian property with lots of original features. It'd be nice, though, if you had some features, fireplace, that sort of thing, a few original, yeah. original bits. A bit of character in a house. Yeah, a bit of something character. Something a little bit unusual. So what is your budget? Uh, around about 100000 100000 yes. OK. Give or take a bit or give or take nothing? Either way. go above, but preferably not. With our own place, you could look to have an extra room that we haven't got here as a sort of fun room. I think it'd be a boys' room. You Do you now? Room. I think that might be up for debate. Well, OK, <laughs> could, be a, could be a boys' room or a girls' room. Or a girls' room, I thought you'd agree. I'll decorate it in the colours I like and then you might decide you don't want to make it a boys' room. Perhaps. <laughs> so, garden, two beds, good-sized kitchen and sitting room, period yeah. property, for no more than about 100, 110 grand. Yes, please. Not too much of a tall order. <laughs> <laughs> Bristol's housing stock ranges from typical Victorian terraced houses to contemporary warehouse conversions on the docks and Georgian villas. Overall, the cost of property matches the national average, although prices vary widely depending on location. Clifton, where Nicky and Paul are renting, has long been one of the most sought-after areas of Bristol due to its views of the city, its Georgian terraces and its shops, restaurants and green space. You pay for it too. A two-bedroom flat can cost £180,000 and even a garage can set you back £35,000. So Nicky and Paul want a two-bedroom house and they're hoping to find one for around £100,000. Since they're also concerned about moving too far away from their friends, they'll need an affordable, up-and-coming area close to the city centre so they can enjoy Bristol's nightlife. Sounds a challenge, but we found it in Totterdown, Windmill Hill and Southville. These areas are definitely on the up. They may be situated south of the river, but they are the same distance from the city centre as Clifton. And that's only a 15-minute walk. Here, Nicky and Paul's £100,000 is likely to buy them a Victorian home with a garden. This is our first property and we're in St Luke's Crescent. This house is on the market for 50 quid short of 100 grand. Wow. I think the owners of this house must be very keen on yellow. But it's a fantastic room. Sure, it's it? yes. yes. And it's got... Very nice. Victorian fireplace. Pine everywhere. It's quite like that. Do you like wood? Do you like wood? Yeah, I like the wood, I like the wood, 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 wood effect. Nice. That's been not... Our really friend's just done hers all. So what's your straight. initial impression? Very nice, actually. Nice. Yeah. Sometimes on a viewing, you can just feel those positive vibes. Nicky and Paul were doing a lot of smiling. This is a nice size bedroom. Built some wardrobes as well. Are they? Are they freestanding? Yeah. Good size second bedroom. Yeah, it's double bedroom. You could get a double yeah, bedding, can you? Could, you? Yeah. yeah. This is the most staggering view, though. Come and come and have a look. That is lovely, isn't it? It is. It's really beautiful. If it wasn't for the railway tracks, there'd be other buildings you wouldn't enjoy. That's right. Yeah. This place gets better and better, wow. even down to the oh, smallest room. Huge. My word. It's enormous. That is fantastic size. That is a big yeah. bath. There is loads. Can fit the rest you could probably fit Nicky in that bath as well at yeah. the same time. But not the rest of the rugby team, isn't that what you, you guys do? You all bath together? Yeah, we yeah, tend to, but not in the uh, get mate in biblical there. sense. <laughs> From a first time buyer perspective, it's ideal because a lot of the, the sort of hard grind has been done, like the wooden floors, mm. Mm. opening up a little bit more. You know, all yes. that kind of thing. But. There's still a lot you can do to it. You can really add value to it. They'd even converted the loft into a playroom. Ideal for Paul. They've really done this very carefully. The tile up all the brickwork, beautiful beams. But I could see that you could have this as your as the office PlayStation boys room. Boys type yeah, I could room. Play in here. Yeah. It could be that. Mm. 
That might be. Yeah, drinking room. Yeah. And then you'd never leave. Because you wouldn't be able to get down the stairs. <laughs> well, just sleep in here. It's nice room. to have some options. You, you, we're looking for a two bed house. And we've got a two bed plus a, an extra room. Yes. So, whichever way around, we've got a room that you haven't thought, you hadn't expected to, to find. Get, yeah, for it's the an money. added yeah. bonus. We've found mm. it. A well converted loft not only increases living space, but if you're lucky, could add as much as 30% to the value of your property. You'll need planning permission. As a rule of thumb, if other lofts in the street have been converted, you should be in luck. But don't buy anything on the assumption you'll get the go-ahead. It may never happen. If you do decide to go for it, be careful that any alterations you make comply with building regulations. You'll need a proper staircase, escape windows and self-closing doors. What a place! It's barely 10 o'clock on day one and already I've got that warm feeling. So the, the, the vendors have found themselves something and they're moving to Ireland. Yes. I don't know how long this has been on the market, but I'm always very pleased to hear when the vendors have found something and they're moving away and, and the, the words come down the line that they are very keen to sell. Right. So there'd probably be an opportunity to get it for, for less than what they're asking. What do you think? I, mean, I really like it. Good size. All the rooms are good sizes. There's no like tiny room, big room. Yeah, it's good. I like it. I'm not. You can't be. It's it's wonderful that you're thinking about putting an offer, and it's wonderful that we've the first thing that we've found for you you like because mm. that's what we're here to do. Mm. But we've got we've got other things to show you. I'm going to disagree with you. Why? Because it's Friday, and if you do like this house, and if we could make an offer which could be agreed by the end of today, that would mean that the Saturday viewers would not ever see it. <laughs> because the thing is that it's Saturday that a young couple exactly like you yes. would be looking. Off work. Yeah. You're off work today. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm, I'm a bit stunned. I'm a bit stunned. But you've been looking for four weeks. It's very different to anything we've looked at. Absolutely. We very different. Like this. It's, it's all been more 1930s style yeah. houses. This is more period. It's got some nice period features. And like you say, a lot of the work's been done. Um, you know, a lot of the big work's been done. In but it. you can see where you can sort of put your mark to it yeah. and improve it. I, I'm inclined to think, you know, get on the phone, at the very least express a very strong interest with the, with the agent. See a couple more, but I'd like to have this tied up by the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> it's against my principles to let someone have the first thing they see, so onwards. Just a five minute walk away from St Luke's Crescent, our second property is on Bellevue Road. It's on sale for £94,950. It's got two bedrooms and a large garden as well. Yeah. Wow. Um, well, yeah. Nice size living room. Quite big, isn't it? Yeah, it is big. Yeah. I think it's bigger window. than the last one because the door is wider, the house is wider, and a bay window is bay so windows, nice. Bay windows, yeah. yeah. Second living room at a striped dining room. This is really a dining yeah. room. Yes. Yeah, it is, isn't I it? Mean, it is. it's, it's not got any other use, as yeah. it were. No, the, we've come into this room and all the features have gone. But the bits and pieces that we liked from next door. Yeah. 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 I'd be very inclined to <laughs> knock down kitchen. this wall and open up the kitchen and have a big kitchen sitting room. This house is bigger than St Luke's Crescent, but it doesn't make the most of the extra space and doesn't have the same charm. They're not going to buy this house. It's not right for them. To make this house fit its true potential, mm. you'd have to do a considerable amount of work, More particularly downstairs. More than £6,000 worth of work. If you did that, then I'm sure you would add to the value and find it was a very valuable house. But you see, I don't get a feel we're getting the, the real nice vibe that we'd actually spend the time knocking necessary the walls down and stuff. Because yeah. if, you, if you're not excited about yeah. it, we won't, we won't ever get around to if doing it. Because it's big money, big effort, big time yes. to yeah. do it. Well, money's the main thing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, the first one's still ahead. But just to be sure, we're on to the next property. An end of terrace house in Southville, priced at £86,980. Come on in, everyone. Now, this is more like it. This house has the character and the gloss to suit Nicky and Paul. All the rooms are a good size and the layout is excellent. 
However, unlike St Luke's Crescent, this property leaves little scope for improvement or to add value. Yeah. What did you say? It's nice, yeah. <laughs> it's you seem to have used that nice. word a lot it's in this house. Nice. Everything is nice, too nice. And then from the rather nice little garden, we caught sight of the view. Now, don't use the word nice, Paul. No, I don't think the word nice applies in this context. No, it's a lovely house inside. But say you bought this house, when you came to sell it, people were wandering through going, oh, lovely house, lovely house. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's a shame. And move on. Yes. And so as when, you say, five years' time, who knows what's here? So it's important for you both to think about the resale, your resale in three or five years' time. Mm. Mm. Does it ruin it for you? A yes. little bit. Yeah. Yes. It and does, I think I'd seen this sort of from before we came in, and maybe that's what has made it difficult made inside. Made it difficult the house. inside because yeah. inside is it's nice, beautifully done. Yeah. <laughs> and as Paul says, it's nice. It's ten to five. I'm really concerned that we should get on the phone uh, about, about house one. Yeah, house yeah. one. I think. I think house yes, one. Yes, having seen a few others, perhaps I'm yeah, quite think... excited about house one now. Yeah, <laughs> even absolutely. more. So. You sure, Paul? Yeah, absolutely. You sounded unsure for a second. Though. No, not at all. I was, what I, I mean, was going to say was, I think, I mean, house one may not have been actually that much bigger. It had the additional room in the loft. It felt it bigger. It felt bigger because it was on three yeah. stories. Yeah. yeah, it did feel bigger. And a bit unusual, really nice. a bit quirky, mm. sort of features that made it feel different to a normal two up, two down type house. So, St Luke's Crescent, masses of character, a great view, and an attic full of potential. It seems we've found Nicky and Paul their perfect home. But is it all happening too fast? So, have Speed you two had up. enough of a chance this afternoon to talk about the house and other things that you've seen? And yes. you're now happy to submit that offer of 97,000? I think I am. Are you? I yes. think are you sure. We, we can't have things. We no. don't. Well, we we don't. I mean, confident. <laughs> we don't. No, 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 no. We I don't am. want to push you into making an offer too early. No. It can be done in the morning, but if you want to do it now, I will happily do it now. Nothing's going to change in the morning. I like it. I would say. I can't. I would can't you spend ninety-seven thousand on it? I would spend ninety-seven thousand on it. David, hi, it's Kirsty again. Um, I've talked to Nicky and Paul and they don't really want to sleep on it. They really feel very strongly that that's the house for them. And they want to make an offer of 97,000. So for the first time ever on Location, 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 our people are about to put in an offer on the first place they've seen. Unbelievable. OK, bye. He said he'd call us back within 10 minutes. Oh, my word. <laughs> <laughs> We're in Bristol with Nicky and Paul. We've shown them three houses so far, but they're still head over heels in love with the very first one we saw. We've put in an offer of £97,000 and are now desperate for a response from the vendors. We know they're hoping for at least £98,500, but we're going to stand our ground. Okie doke. Okay, thanks very much. I will ring you back as soon as I've had a chance to speak to Nicky and Paul about this. Great, thanks so much. Bye. They want more money. They want more money and we're not <laughs> going to give it to them. No. It's as simple as that. We're going to stick to our guns. If we have to stick to our guns and think about it overnight, we're going to stick to our guns yeah. and think about it overnight. 97 is a good, strong offer. He's just coming back because he doesn't want to accept our first offer and he's saying he's going to split the difference between the asking price and our offer and he wants 98 and a half. And right. I yeah. think, personally, but... Mm. What do you think? You ring him back and say 97 or 97, take it or leave yeah. it. Yeah. Let him dwell on it overnight. Mm. So Nicky and Paul are sure that we've found them the right house, but we want to be certain. Tomorrow, we're going to make sure that nothing slipped through the net. So back to the streets in search of something to test Nicky and Paul's resolve. They need to have their nerve tested and to be stretched a bit. Mm. I don't think we've got a problem with St Luke's. I think if we hold on, they will take 97. Mm. But what I'm slightly concerned about is they've been so quick to make up their mind about that one. Is it really right? 
Well, they've seen other things before we arrived, and that's a strong house. Yeah. What I'd... we must do is confirm in our minds, and indeed in theirs, that that is the right house, and the only way of doing that is heading out and seeing some more. In our quest to test, we've come to Windmill Hill, the next Bristol property hotspot. As an up-and-coming area, it's exactly the sort of location that Nicky and Paul might be considering. A good buy is not just about finding the right property, it's about choosing the right area. It's always the same. As soon as you hear about an up-and-coming area, it's already up and come and prices have shot through the roof. So how do you stay one step ahead of everyone else? First, get a map. Note the areas where prices have already risen or being consistently high and look for the areas in between. Walk around and check for those telltale signs of an area on the up. Sold signs, evidence of renovation, new bars and a dead giveaway, new estate agents. Next, visit your town hall planning office. Are there any new facilities like transport links planned for an area? You can also find out which areas developers have big plans for. Check the school league tables People will fight tooth and nail to move to the catchment area of a good school, increasing demand for property and pushing up prices. So, back to our search. After looking at a number of properties in Windmill Hill, we think that we've found something special. The house Kirsty and I have spotted is more expensive than St Luke's Crescent at 120,000, but we think if Nicky and Paul can stretch to make the extra investment, in a few years' time they could be sitting on a gold mine. Kirsty and I have just been into the house behind us to meet the vendors. We've had a quick scoot around. The house is very, very impressive indeed. Pretty much exactly what they're after. Exactly. The problem is the asking price is 120,000, which is right at the top of their budget. And we're not sure, regardless of how impressive the house is, whether Paul and Nicky would actually stretch that far. So we've come outside to ring them and find that out before taking any further. At £20,000 more than St Luke's Crescent, you'd expect added benefits, and this property has them. It's got two additional rooms and even a conservatory looking onto the garden, ideal for Nicky and Paul's barbecue parties. Increasing their mortgage an additional £20,000 would cost them around an extra £35 a week. That's too attractive an offer to be missed, and so they're heading over to see it. Will this one blow St Luke's Crescent out of the water? Very nice. That is nice. Excellent. It's a bit different, isn't it? I thought you'd like a Original fireplace. staircase. Quite fireplace rustic fireplace, gorgeous. which they obviously use with the real fire. Really nice corner sink. Oh, it is nice. It is nice. It is nice. And they've knocked straight through into the kitchen. Straight through to the kitchen. And the view from the sink might even get Paul doing the dishes. It is a beautiful view. It really is. Now, I think this is an absolute joy. It's a laundry room with a second loo. Oh, really? Interesting. Fantastic. Room, isn't it? That's yeah. good. It's for watching telly, Part playing PlayStation, and yeah. doing stuff at night. She went bright red when we first came into the living room. Her first two seconds were, oh, God, this is fantastic. I think they're going to find this really difficult. It's really going to tease them. This is a lovely room. It's, it's, it's huge. huge. You don't feel like you're in a basement at all, no. Oh, it's a cute little garden, though. It's a lovely garden, isn't it? Peaceful and quiet. I mean, if you compare it to St Luke's Crescent, there's no railway track and there's no road. No, that's true. That's true. My first impressions when I went into the place was, it, yeah, it's lovely. I mean, I think showed them a fair yeah, I thought yeah. red, it was lovely. A real reaction. Yeah. If I think about it, I don't know practically if I do like having the kitchen open. Yeah. And there's, I don't there's know more space if I like, I feel bigger. we're going downstairs to that sort of extra room. Yeah. Which you probably rarely use. I can see it getting lost a bit. Yeah. In winter, I can see you never go down there. Yeah. I like this house. This is a really nice house, but it doesn't... It's too... Uh, it's, not, it's not as much fun, I don't think, as yeah. the other one. That's brilliant. Yeah. End of day two, not even end of day two, halfway through day two, and... Paul and Nikki are even more convinced that we found them the right house the first time. Let's go and have some lunch, get on the phone, call the agent and make sure that that house is yours. We tempted them, but Nikki and Paul just didn't bite. Now they're even more sure that they really want St Luke's Crescent. 
The house is on the market at £99,950. Yesterday, we left the agents and the vendors thinking about the offer of 97000 whilst they suggested meeting us halfway at 98500 Kirsty knows that Paul and Nicky would be prepared to pay that to secure this house, but she's not telling the agent that. Uh, Nicky and Paul have sat down and gone through some figures and everything. And we do think that 97 is a good offer because of the fact that they're not in a chain and that they have a good deposit and they have their mortgage already arranged. And we're going to stick to 97. I know your vendor wanted 98 and a half. Um, but for them, that small difference really does make quite a big difference. Okay. Nervous. How long have we been waiting? We've been standing here in the cold for 20 minutes waiting for this call. Okay. Here we go. That's the heart right, people. Hello. Ian, hi. They are going to be chuffed bits. Thank you very much indeed. We will be in touch on Monday. Okay, wonderful. Thanks very much. Bye. And the sun came. We got out. it. We got they it. Got it. <laughs> Yay. Good well work. Good done. work. Well done. Cool. <laughs> we need a drink. Yeah. Right, let's drink. So let's go and have a beer. So, a truly happy ending. We found Nicky and Paul a house that they fell in love with immediately. They got it and moved in seven weeks later. We are now. <laughs> yes! Hey. Super. Brilliant. There we are. Look at Congratulations, that. Congratulations, you two. Cheers. Cheers. Working from home is becoming more and more popular, and it's easy to see why. No more commuting, no more office politics, and you know exactly where everything is. But are you sure you've got enough space to live and to work? Or is it time to move? This week, we're searching for space. And since we're in Scotland, where the rules about house buying are very different, we've really got our work cut out for us. We're professional house hunters, and our job is to make sure the buyer gets the best possible property for the best possible price, whether it's a loft in the city or a little place in the country. Over the coming weeks, we'll be finding properties for people who have to move but need a little help. But with only one long weekend to find them the home of their dreams, it's a race against the clock. This week, we're going to be helping the Williams family. Hugh works in South Queensbury for Motorola, and Jane has just started her own business designing horse blankets and riding wear. They have a three-year-old daughter called Rosie. They converted and sold an old barn in Leicestershire, making a tidy profit in the process. But now they're living with Jane's mum and stepdad. They're willing to travel anywhere within an hour of Edinburgh and have 270,000 to spend. They've been looking for some time now and have had several properties fall at the last hurdle. Jane's parents want their house back. Oh, how long have you been here? Um, since last We've been July. here about 13 oh, years goodness. now, haven't we? <laughs> when we first moved up here, um, we expected to find somewhere quite quickly, and obviously we've been here nine months now, so we're living on top of each other. My priority would be a house, and then business second. My priority would be... I'm going to get slated for this. Would be to get the story sorted out for the business. The condition of the property, we really don't care as long as it's structurally sound. As long as the, the land and the setting is perfect, the location is absolutely crucial for us. The outbuildings would have a use long term for, you know, a business right. and storage and perhaps offices if we could get right. planning and things like okay. that. How much space do you need in the house? We, our last house was a very, very big barn. We converted a barn mm -hmm. in South Leicestershire. So our furniture, we have a lot of furniture that's in storage. And because it was, they were very big rooms, our furniture's very big. I ideally, the minimal amount of land that I would like, the perfect amount would be 25 acres. Maximum would be 40 acres-ish. How do you get to work? Um, by car. Um... To, to sum up, we are looking for a traditional farmhouse without buildings and it must have a spacious interior, 25 acres of land and be within 25 miles of Edinburgh, all for £270,000. I don't think there's any chance of moving ever again. <laughs> we just want everything around us again and to sort of feel like it's a home again. <laughs> Jane and Hugh have been looking for nine months. Kirsty and I have got four days to, um, to sort this situation out. The Williams search starts in Stirlingshire, but to find the right house, they are prepared to travel. The only condition they have is that Hugh must be able to get to his job in Edinburgh easily. Stirlingshire, areas around Edinburgh, and even as far afield as the borders all appeal to them. 
There is a genuine shortage of rural properties as demand from people moving out of the cities has driven prices up. The greatest rises have been in East Lothian as people cash in on Edinburgh's property boom. Prices here have risen by as much as 35% compared to a Scottish average of 4.1%. Stirling and Perthshire have also seen property prices rise higher than average. So, for the maximum amount of space and biggest investment potential, the Williams need to look far and wide. But with such fantastic housing stock in these areas, we really should be able to find somewhere that represents genuine value for money. In Scotland, a different system of buying property operates. All potential buyers make offers over the asking price, and the highest bidder wins. So, with the Williams after a large traditional farm without buildings and at least 15 acres of land, all within an hour's drive of Edinburgh, it's time to get to our first viewing. Falcon Hill is 40 miles from Edinburgh, has four bedrooms, two reception rooms and a large kitchen, as well as outhouses and a barn. Its idyllic woodland setting with 32 acres of land seem perfect. The details invite offers over 250,000. Off to you. Oh, thank you, Kirsty. This looks like it. Oh, look, you know what this is, Hugh? Probably been. It's, yeah. it's this the dog it? round. Yeah. Hugh has two flat coat <laughs> retrievers, and he's really concerned that for the last eight months they've been living in the garden shed, and he wants them to have a proper space. And this is clearly the space for the dogs that live here. This is the biggest space, yeah. and we've been living in it. Yeah. <laughs> That's very true. You know, before when we talked about your furniture, and you were oh. saying that it was quite big, this is a bit of an odd-shaped room. It is. We, there's no way we'd get a so even one of the sofas in there. No. I mean, yeah. my inclination usually would be to think, what's on the other side of that wall? Is it the dining room, and could you knock it through? But that's clearly the staircase. Mm. So the only place you could knock it through would be there. Yeah. This would probably be the spare room. Right. Okay. We've got three bedrooms on this floor uh -huh. and a fourth down by the kitchen. Mm -hmm. That's two. This carpet has got to go. Second bedroom. Second bedroom. It just speaks for itself. Although from the outside the house seems big, nice its first bedroom. apparent fault are the interior dimensions. The barn we were in before, the rooms were like 24 foot long and maybe, I can't remember exactly, about 20 foot wide. So Each bedroom? Uh, well, yeah. <gasps> They're but huge, the, yeah. But the, our furniture is, like all our beds are king size beds. The property does have the potential to expand by building extensions, but this type of work would put the house out of their budget. Another one of those. Yeah, yeah but then you, this is a two hundred and fifty thousand exactly. pounds house, so you can't do it. Exactly. and it costs you another hundred thousand pounds to do exactly. that. No. The house comes with a barn just fifty feet from the main building, and Jane wants to see if it's suitable to run her business from. God, this is amazing. It's huge. I think that the house is so small that you'd really need sort of somewhere to work. This would be where you'd have to set up your yes. offices and storage. I mean, there's yeah. definitely room in this building to have three or four people walk, working, working for you uh, and quite a lot uh, of storage. Uh, when we first saw the house from the outside, because we were looking for that sort of traditional Scottish feeling, I think, overall, yeah. it's perfect. And then since we've been around the house, unfortunately, um, from my point of view, it's just sort of gone downhill a bit. So, while our first property is in a great location and has room to expand, it doesn't make it onto the Williams shortlist because it just feels too small. It's on the market at 250,000 and very likely to go in excess of that. It still needs work to bring it up to their requirements. We're going to discount it and move on to the next. The next property is just 18 miles from Edinburgh. The old cart house has the potential to fulfil the Williams' needs. It would need major work before they could move in, but the asking price reflects this at around £100,000. Jane and Hugh have said they're willing to take on quite major renovation work, but are they prepared for something as big as this? The one slightly worrying issue from the externals is that the, is that the uh, lane that we drove in up is not available for use from this house. So the owner of this house would have to create their own road oh, no, that way, and that certainly Keep would be an, here. quite a considerable expense. Um, the planning, it does have planning permission, and we've got the plans for those. 
with your main doors at the front. So that's north. So it's south. South Never facing. Eat. Southwest facing. That's a lovely aspect, isn't it? The aspect of your home is very important for your future happiness. You're looking to maximise the sun at all times during the day, so room layout is crucial. The ideal way for your house to face is on an east-west axis, but you're not home and dry yet. Since the sun rises in the east, it's best to have your bedrooms facing east for the morning light. That way, you come home to the setting sun in the west with your living rooms and garden bathed in light. Yeah. Uh, They're proposing a room per pillow, which seems tiny. But you don't want seven bedrooms anyway. Well, come on. Oh, look, no. that's two. Here's the that's second two. pillar. So that's yeah. the first room. That's your drawing room, is that? If yeah. you're looking at derelict property, okay. try to get hold of any development plans that have been drawn. They'll help you visualise potential yeah. changes. I'm not sure whether it'd be possible to raise the roof and get bedrooms up here. What do you think? It's, it's a big loft, isn't it? Yeah, it's a huge loft. And it runs the entire length of the barn. Okay. We didn't go in to explore because the structure looked too weak. If you are viewing semi-derelict property, do check with the estate agent that it's Let's safe. Let's just have a look and see what the view would be like from those windows at the back of the barn. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, my goodness. Now, whether you can actually see that from the house, I don't know, but you'd certainly sure be able to see it from the garden. Always check who your neighbours are. If you end up buying next to commercial properties, you could find that noise and pollution are a major problem. So get on the phone and find out what they do and what hours they work. We need to find out more about what exactly is going on there. It's fine today that should there be any fumes, the wind's taking them in the opposite direction. That's should they bring them this way, it's definitely going to affect the, the, um, the general quality of life in this address. This property is on the market at around 100,000. But remember the Scottish system, the asking price is low and vendors expect to receive offers above that price. Said to me that the landlord would be looking for something of about 120,000. Doesn't quite tie up in my head because if he hasn't sold it for four years, his planning permission is about to run out. Planning permission is actually quite an expensive operation to go through to get complicated planning like this. Um, I think he'd be keen to do a deal and he'd be quite glad of possibly even 60,000. So, the old cart house has the potential to fulfill all the Williams needs. It's 14 miles from Edinburgh, the living area is big, it has character and storage, the land is available for them to build stables, and access, although costly, would be no problem. It's going to come down to price and whether you actually really want to take on a project of this size. So, not off to a brilliant start. And unfortunately, things were to get a lot weirder before they got any better. Oh, stop! Oh, stop doing that! <laughs> Somebody was up on the roof. Join us in part two to see what happens to the Williams and to find out what else you can buy for a quarter of a million pounds in our hot property guide. Is anybody in there? back with the Williams and we're still hunting for that dream farm for under £270,000 within 25 miles of Edinburgh. It's our second day and we've got three more properties to view. The first property, Grains Farm, had all the space and the land they were looking for, but its appearance was not that of a traditional farmhouse and Jane took an immediate dislike to it. I think we can definitely forget this, Phil. It's not very nice at all. Not happening for you. Mm, definitely not. You should generally trust your instincts, but I would recommend looking at everything because you never know what you might find. Abdon Farm looked promising from the details, was on the market for 250,000 and was within 25 miles of Edinburgh. But it wasn't quite right. But we did have a disappointing initial reaction, didn't we? Yeah, there's a main road sort of out the front that we thought. Mm. It's and there's a sprawling deal. urban development on oh. the other side of the road. I may be fast-forwarding <laughs> on this, and I, I'll, I, I wait to be slapped down, but it seems to me this is right building, wrong location, and we've just come from right location, wrong building, and it's a pity we can't just put the two together. Do you think you can fix that for us, Phil? This is the uh, sprawling urban here. development. We could stand around for a long time talking about the potential of this plot, but at the end of the day, it's in the wrong location. Back to the Jeep. Following the death of its previous owner, Greenburn Farm had been abandoned only three weeks before. 
On arrival, the Williams felt very confident, but its exterior was deceptive and hid a whole host of problems. But the asking price was only £60,000. Jane and Hugh are prepared to do renovation work, but what we discovered at Greenburn Farm was not for the faint-hearted. I can see you're not enjoying this, but we've got to look through all of this rubbish. It's the only way we're going to give this property proper consideration. But, Phil, do you set any store by, you know, vibes? This is ghostly. I mean, it's really yeah. haunted. It's got a really, really cool touch. Yeah. I mean, all the really? windows blown in, but yeah. it does It's a derelict like house. We're no, looking Phil, at a derelict it's house. No, it's nothing more than that. And I would really happily spend no more than about two seconds <laughs> in here. So can we get <laughs> a move on? Come on. Phil loves it. <laughs> well, can, you, <laughs> can you look past all of what we're seeing? I've looked past everything. Yeah. I think it's uh, horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I don't know what on earth. In fact, I can't. Even going back down the stairs, I'm going to jump through the window. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, they wanted a project, but perhaps not that big. A bit of a long shot. So, it's been a disappointing day. Three viewings, three outright rejections. Hugh and Jane have to see if there's any room for compromise. In the meantime, check out these fantastic properties on the market this week for a quarter of a million pounds. A splendid flat on two floors situated in the heart of Edinburgh's new town with three public rooms, three bedrooms and two bathrooms is looking for offers over £225,000. Or if the countryside appeals more, then how about parting with £275,000 for this charming thatched cottage in Hampshire that has plenty of space with three bedrooms, its own garage and a mature garden. If you're looking for something a little further afield, then the little chapel in Somerset could be the house for you. It's a four-bedroom converted 19th-century chapel with a garden and parking and could be yours for £250,000. In London, you get slightly less for your money, but you could do a lot worse than a two-bedroom flat in the Grade 2 listed Imperial Hall on London City Road, priced at £245,000. Finally, if all you want is a break, then look no further than this stunning cottage complex in Abergavenny. Priced at £250,000, you get four bedrooms, a garage, stables and acres of land for your money. The choice is yours. It's day three and we still don't have a serious contender. Overnight, Hugh decides to widen the search to include properties more than an hour's drive from Edinburgh. With time running out, we leave Phil back at the hotel looking for new leads. Old Shoreswood Hall is well outside the Williams target area and is actually in Northumberland. But the details for this property look so good that we can't resist a viewing. Even at £285,000, 15 grand above their limit. <sighs> wow. This is the most incredible spot, isn't it? It's absolutely It's beautiful. I mean, the, the view is just the most staggering thing I've ever seen. Now, we've had this before. We've had a fabulous spot and we've stood outside the house and we've said, oh my God, this is amazing. And then we've gone in and we've come out really disappointed and sort of down on the floor. So we're going to go in and have a look and fingers, cr fingers crossed. Fingers crossed yeah. Okay. Oh, that's a delicious smell. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that fireplace, isn't uh, that sofa, beautiful? It's the same sofa as that. <laughs> yeah. Was, you know, we said so, we were okay. able to get it in. It's a good size room, isn't it? Hello. It's lovely. It's a really conventional Hello. drawing room, but it's lovely. This room's got an amazing feeling. It has, it, it has. I, I'm not a great believer in that feng shui, but I definitely <laughs> believe that some rooms <laughs> flow. You know, it's something about the light or the, where the door is and where the windows is, but when you come into this room and it just flows properly. Oh, that smell again. It's even stronger now. Mm -hmm. Oh! It's a fire. That's what it is. It's a wood burner. It's a wood burning stove. Oh, it's really warm. Look at the old beers. It's really warm. Look, isn't this a cosy room? Yeah. It's really snug, isn't it? I yeah. mean, it is a real snug. Oh, can we spend the rest of the weekend yeah. here? Yeah, you want to take your shoes yeah. off and crash on the couch. You just you just really it. do. It has got a similar so... feeling to the, to the snug we had in, in our old house, doesn't oh. it? Really? Yeah. Really Does it feel similar. like coming home? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's really nice. <laughs> Come and look at this. Oh, that is beautiful. This isn't it lovely? Yeah. And every... The windows are so low. 
You don't have to look at the view, it sort of comes in at you. I think what I really, really like about it is the furniture just fits so well, doesn't yeah. it? It feels it's... like a, a lovely farmhouse kitchen. That's something you've really got to watch out for with kitchens these days. It's very fashionable to have freestanding pieces of furniture. You could buy a house because of the kitchen and find when you moved in that the kitchen simply wasn't there anymore. The way to tell, you probably know this already, but if you can put your hand behind it, it's freestanding. And if you can't, it's not, basically. Look at this staircase. It really sweeps up, doesn't it? Uh, you've got to come and check out oh, this room. Wow. I know. Look, that's just the kids' annex. You should see this. Look. Look. Uh, uh, Isn't it fantastic? It's great. It's beautiful, look at that. It's just, just such a fantastic room and the view and everything. It's really bright, isn't it? It's great. It's, it's fantastic, isn't it? I need yeah. like this room. Oh. Yes. Usually, <laughs> and this is really silly, I've left my bag in the Jeep, but you know what I always say? Two things you take to a house. A torch to check out dark storage areas and a tape measure plus your measurements for your special pieces of furniture. And I've broken my golden rule. I haven't got my torch with me. I left it in the car. But basically, I think even without the torch, we can see that that's a good storage space with a proper access. I want to show you the boys' rooms upstairs. These are real boys' rooms up here. Look. Universal opinion? It's absolutely brilliant. Perfect. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> loves it. I want it. You want it. Everybody wants it. Old Shoreswood Hall fits the bill exactly. However, while reviewing the estate agent's details, a potential problem arises. We discover a restrictive clause, no, legally known as a covenant, attached to the property. The use of the hall is restricted to that of a private dwelling house, with the land to be used solely for agricultural, horticultural or silvicultural purposes. This covenant seems to forbid the use of the house for non-agricultural work, which means the Williams may not be able to use this house for their horse blanket business. Jane and Hugh love Old Shoreswood Hall. It's the perfect size and it's reasonably priced because of its relative isolation. However, we're not happy about the covenant, so Phil and I hit the phones to find out more. Um, you know this restrictive covenant? Who owns that covenant? I mean, who enforces it? Oh, right. I see, but he's trying to buy the house himself. No. OK, well, well thanks so much for your help, James, and, and we will be in touch very, very soon. OK, bye then. The real problem is this flaming covenant. Mm. That covenant belongs to the next-door neighbour who is attempting to buy the house himself. The farmer next door? Yeah, the one with the big barns. And if he turned nasty mm. after Hugh and Jane had bought the house... They would never be able to use the outbuilding as an office. No. So, I think the way to take this forward is to advise them to wait until the 23rd, mm -hmm. put in an offer, worry about the restrictive covenant afterwards. If, mm -hmm. the offer, if their offer is accepted, they can approach the farmer, if they're happy with the response, fine. If they're not, they withdraw. Yep. Yeah? Yep. The joys of the English system. The only other sticking point is the journey time to Hugh's work. He reckons that if we can do the journey in under an hour and 20 minutes, they'll attempt to buy it. If there's a crucial sticking point to buying a house, like how long it'll take you to get to work, make the journey. You're better off doing this before you put in an offer. So Phil stays back at the hotel to do a little more detective work while we try to drive to the Fourth Road Bridge from Northumberland in under an hour and 20 minutes. So how long do you think we've been on the road for now? Uh, uh, 31 minutes. Hello, my name's Phil Spencer. I'm acting for uh, the intending purchase of a property in Shoreswood. Uh, we must be about halfway to Edinburgh at the moment. So if we keep up with this at the moment, then um, certainly things are looking up. Um, I'm really I'm interested to know what your policy would be should the, should the owner of the farm ever wish to extend the buildings or, or indeed change their use? Uh, we've just had a time check, it's been about an hour travelling from the farm um, and we've just seen a sign for the Fourth Road Bridge which is where my work is, which is another 21 miles. Will we be particularly worried about any noise or, um, or anything else that would impact on, on our environment? There's a bridge, there's a bridge, there's a bridge. Oh, yes. Come on, come on. Come on come Two on. minutes exactly to go. I think we might do it by the skin of our teeth. And, and they would need planning permission, is that correct? OK, thank you very much for your time. Bye-bye.
Hugh, what's this? Fourth road bridge. Fourth road bridge! <laughs> Now, there's lots of things we've got to discuss, but in a nutshell, are you going to make it off? Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
It's just a thought. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just, <laughs> just a thought. Just a thought. I think it's more interesting than they're giving it yeah, credit for. Yeah, but the for. thing is, James isn't even going to think about it. Fiona, Fiona's, you can see her mind sticking over it, but James is like, no, 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 no. So, yes, it's a big house with a fantastic garden and more than enough room. But Fiona and James feel it's too close to the main road, so we leave Primrose Cottage for somebody else. Next is a two-bed cottage with a garden on the green in Wood Street Village. It's on the market at 165000 Here we are. This is 49 The Green, Wood Street. It's on at 165000 um, well, listen, we've got quite a few properties via the estate agents to see. Um, I think it's a tricky brief. Kirsty and I have certainly <laughs> got our work cut out. So I'm going to leave you to it and go off and see what else I can find. OK, okay. we'll check it out. We'll see you later. Catch up with you later. Thanks, Carol. Good luck. After you. Oh, my God, it's tiny. It is a bit wee, isn't it? It's very sweet. Though. It is incredibly sweet. It is. It might be quite nice to have a bed made to... F to fit the space, which is not a particularly expensive thing to do, because we've got a how, beautiful bed. Have you? Oh yeah. no! How wide is it? It's king size. So, did you not measure it? It's about five. No. Feet. No. Yeah, okay. Like, yeah. Key. This is a key point. If you have pieces of furniture that you really like, measure them before you go house hunting, okay. so <laughs> that you know whether a space will fit this right. piece of furniture that you yeah. don't want to let go of. A post office is the centre of a village community and a great place to discover property gossip. Yeah, there's a house here. As a result of this encounter, we discovered a house for sale. I don't think that uh, the Sheehans have quite got the budget for what they, what they really want. Um, so Kirsty and I have really got our work cut out. They're going to have to compromise. They may end up with a house sort of on a road or near a railway, something that just detracts from the value of the house. Here we are, we've got a fairly busy road up the top here, but a patch of green between us and the road, and some very pretty houses here with um, woods in the background. This is an empty house, and this was the one that both the postman and the post office lady knew about. I wonder if we should just have a look through the windows. Nah. Um, I think they'd be bored by it. Meanwhile, the Sheehans are still looking round the green. Mary, the lady who lives here, right. left us out some photographs of the garden in every oh, season, okay. which is a really That's sweet, so sweet thing to do. <gasps> oh, look at that. Oh, wow. All snow. Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Mayfair out on the green. <laughs> God, no, but it gives a really good picture of village it, it does, life. it does. The cottage on the green was picturesque, but just too small. OK, well, this is the one. It's on quite a main road. road. <laughs> I guess you can tell. But let's see what it's like when Absolutely, you get yeah. in the house. Parkside Cottage is a two-bedroomed house with a garden. It's on the market for 150000 The bad news is that it's on a busy road, but that's what brought it into their price range. For the budget the Sheehans have, this may be as close as we'll get to the perfect country idyll. Back room, this is what would have been the kitchen right, in, yeah. in the original two up, two down. So this is your was would have been your kitchen, and then through there is is your front room, as it were. Right. This is actually a much bigger room it than is. the other room. It is mm. much better. What's, um, what's hidden behind here? Okay, blank wall. We're all, we're all right. <laughs> there are no cracks it's yet. Re it's actually really nice. This room. It it's is. really nice proportion. Yeah, and Thanks. again, you could knock this wall down. Can yeah, you? you could definitely put an arch in. If you want to take down a wall in a house, make sure it's not a supporting wall, or you could be in trouble. Take a look at the floorboards. As a rule of thumb, if they run parallel to the wall, chances are it's a supporting one and should be left well alone. If the floorboards run at right angles to the wall, you're in business. Just be sure you really want to remove the wall in the first place. Now, you there's nothing to stop you knocking this down, down and, doing it, and doing it again. You could have double doors opening yeah. out into the back if you, and this build is it a right from the 70s side. extension. It's not bad. It's not bad. No. Nice, nice Fireplace. Wardrobes you could have yeah. put in. Fireplace in the room. Mm. Yeah. Nice. I think your bed would fit in here. Yeah. Centrally, yeah. which is nice as well. Like, yeah, that's what I And know. look at that view out the window. That mm. is beautiful. That really is rural. That is, yeah. Now this, I think, will be a kid's room, but... Yep. Yep. You can soon... Nice. 
solve that problem. You'd probably get a double bed in quite happily yeah, this definitely. way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Which is obviously you can what put you want. cupboards in here. I mean, it would be tight, but yeah, it's a guest room. Yeah, yeah beggars can't be choosers, as we're yeah, fast learning. <laughs> This is a lovely room. It is a very nice room. Lots of character. Again, slanted ceilings, which I love. Yeah. I love. Fantastic view. Fantastic view. Really nice view. view. It's all wooded at the back. And in the summer, that would be lovely. Yeah. I and mean, in about three months' time, yeah. the leaves on the trees and everything, it'll be mm -hmm. fantastic. How was it? Good. It was great. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. nice. Yeah. Small, big enough. Yeah, no, well, look, I mean, it, it, it is quite small, but it's not too small. It's not tiny, tiny. It's not as small as the first one we no. saw. No. And it's got a huge potential. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's a lovely yes. garden. Well, it could be a really nice yeah. garden. Main yeah. downside is the main road. Right. Yeah. But, you know, once but If you've got it at the right price, could you live in it? Absolutely. I think so, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so we have a contender, and we've still got more to see. Several months earlier, Fiona and James had fallen in love with a cottage in the village of Pease Lake, five miles from Guildford. Unfortunately, they got trapped in a sealed bid scenario and lost the house to a higher bidder. But another house is on the market in the village, very close to the one they lost. Ho Cottage is a two-bedroom semi in the village they love. Unfortunately, it's a 15-minute bus ride to the nearest train station, so transport isn't great and it's pricey at 215000 the setting is idyllic, so it's worth a look. We've heard from the agents that there is a, an offer on the table of 210, which the lady here is, is happy with, but the offer comes with an incomplete chain. So if she can get someone to offer her an acceptable amount of money with a complete chain, or as in your position as a first-time buyer, she's very interested, mm. which is why we brought you today. <laughs> It's a nice size room. It's a nice size There's a room. lot of furniture in it's here. A, yeah, I mean, it, it's got big table, piano, sofa, everything, and it seems nice a bit floor boards. Beautiful yeah. floorboards. It's a real old cliche, but the difference it makes having a real fire blazing mm. when people look around the yeah, house. Absolutely. Mm. You know, yeah, if this, it, it just makes a huge difference. She switched on the lights, it's really tidy, yeah. it's really warm. If she had coffee out, we'd have the wallet out on the table. Settle, <laughs> yeah. settle. She's done it nicely. It's beautifully done. This is a lovely, lovely room, isn't lovely it? Look. Bedroom. Fireplace, it? lovely nice. cupboards. View. Yeah, fantastic view. This is a really nice room. Oh wow, another big room with another corner fireplace. This is a really good size room yeah. with a really nice Love tongue and groove yeah. panelling. Love that. And it's for our own fireplace. But I don't know if I could live here looking at the house I didn't get for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> this, this house just outside the oh, window, look. Oh, look. On, on the corner, is the house that James and Fiona missed out on. <laughs> OK. I don't think either of us would want to spend the rest of our lives living in this house, uh, looking at the one we'd have rather had out of our back window. So. And would you, having seen this, you're sure that you'd have rather had Absolutely. the other one? Absolutely. What dodgy advice are you giving them? Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> what were you talking about? Getting that house? Yes. We've have you stayed in touch with the agent? We have called once and they have once. said they'll be in touch with us if it goes wrong. You well. must stay on the case every week, at least once a week. That's how I got my flat. I missed out because, well, I'm not going to go into this, but I, I, I went on at the agent literally all the time saying, has it exchanged, has it exchanged, has it exchanged? So you can't put it to the back of your mind until it has exchanged and then you know you've lost it. Just stay in touch with the agent. So Ho Cottage had great rooms and needed very little work, but Fiona and James couldn't bring themselves to live beside the house they really loved and didn't get. So on we go. After seeing and rejecting a number of properties, the Sheehans wanted me to arrange a second viewing on Parkside Cottage. But David, the agent, was about to dramatically raise the stakes. That's a bit of a major development. There's another offer in on the house at the old asking price, but that old asking price on 150 is now shot up to 159. It no longer represents the bargain for James and Fiona that it did, and we're really up against it because there's another couple involved. We decided not to tell Fiona and James about the development just yet, but all will be revealed in part two. I suspect that this scenario will go to sealed bid. That's oh, my gut feeling. Well, but then we're not going. No, 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 I'm not doing that again.
Fiona and James are city dwellers with a passion for the country, so we're looking for a cottage in Surrey within commuting distance of London for under £170,000. Parkside is their favourite so far, and we're on our way back for another look. This was the wee room. Yeah. Which is perfectly good as a guest room. Yep. And you could reinstate this fireplace if you wanted to. Is there a fireplace behind yeah. there? Yeah, that would be the fireplace. I tell you one if you were thing. really feeling in the money, you could actually take it out. In the money. Yeah. As long very... as you took it out in the, in the attic as well. But I have been in some houses where the chimney breast has been removed. Um, and, it, and it all looks fine. But I poked my head up into the attic and the chimney breast was still there. Oh, God, so that's a through. massive problem because we've got the weight of the chimney breast upstairs and nothing supporting, uh, and nothing supporting it beneath. Whilst keeping an eye out for problems, you might find some original features hidden by more recent developments. So poke around when you view an old house. First of all, look under carpets and remember to ask about replacement wooden floors. Chances are the old ones were never removed. Next, look at staircases. Hardboard was often fitted over ornate banisters, as well as panelled doors. And finally, keep an eye out for that original fireplace. Yes, the built This is the yeah. room that really sells it, I think. Yeah, yeah, this is actually bigger than I've been remembering. Are you interested enough to make an offer? Y yes. Yes. Okay. There's no easy way of... <laughs> Phil, Phil, and, Phil and I are like, you tell, you tell, you okay, tell. Okay, someone you. else has already put an offer in of... Uh, no. <laughs> Basically, what's happened is that, A, someone else saw it on Saturday yeah. and made an offer yeah. below the asking price, mm -hmm. and this is the crunch. The was, the original asking price was 150 Yeah. It's now. It the asking price has gone up to 159 since Saturday? Since Saturday. Right. The other people have obviously been aggressive and decisive. Mm -hmm. They've seen the offer. They've seen the place on Saturday. They knew we were looking at it. They put in an offer They've first thing on Monday morning. Away with an offer. That, to me, shows a dedicated, committed purchaser yeah. who we are now in the frame. Who we're competing with. Competing yeah. with. So I think 155 would really scare the horses for this one because it. It's well in excess of what the other people have offered, and it's reasonably near the new asking price. So let's try and... The it's, thing it's, I'm it's thinking now is that if the other people are aggressive, we're going to get aggressive, they might think there and go, ooh, two aggressive punters. Let them fight off and we'll just sit back and count yeah, the money. Yeah, that, that, that may be the case, but they're the ones with the house. David, hi, it's Kirsty again. Hi, um, we're pr I mean, Fiona and James are very keen on this and, and, and they're coming straight in with an offer of 155. Okay. Okay, thanks, David. Okay, bye. Okay, the other people are also first time buyers who have also got their finances in order. They have come back to David with a second offer, which is also below the new asking price. He did say one thing, he said, look, if I were you, I realise that every penny that they save on, the, on this house is key, mm -hmm. but if I were you, I'd go straight in at the asking price, and, I, and, I, and you know, otherwise the likelihood is that you're not gonna get it. I suspect that this scenario will go to sealed bids. That's oh. my gut feeling, well, but- then we're not going no, for no, it no, 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 I'm not doing that again, I'm not doing it again. We'll do with us, on your, by your side. That You didn't have us with you last time. We're the sealed bid, secret sealed bid weapon. We can do it. Believe me, I have never lost a sealed bid in three years. Despite all the problems, Parkside is still the front runner. It's very close to their horse and has great views of the Surrey Downs. However, we now have a rival bidder, and to cap it all, the Sheehan's new offer of 155,000 has just been rejected. Time to retreat to our hotel and draw up a new battle plan. Yeah. Should it go to sealed bid, we've got to come up with a plan. You've just said we don't you, you're happy to go to, to one. We don't want it to go to sealed bids, but it's a nature of a, of a seller's market. It's an efficient way of selling property. And if you were selling that house, 
I think the chance are you put it to sell bids. The reason we always say that the golden rule is that you must have your finances organised is because you could come across this very scenario. Sealed bids have to be handled properly. Your bid should be properly presented. Make the offer an uneven figure. Also, enclose a letter from your bank confirming you have an easily available deposit and enclose confirmation of your mortgage offer. As far as we're concerned, we win sealed bids. Right. And if the other people are not sitting in this hotel lobby, <laughs> listening to all of this <laughs> <laughs> advice that yes. we're freely giving out, then, you know, we might be OK. We suspect that both parties have offered 155,000. So our slightly high risk strategy is to do nothing and force the other party to show their hand. If all goes according to plan, we'll then top their offer, avoid a sealed bid scenario and win the property. But we keep going to viewings just in case. It's really seductive, this house, because mm -hmm. they've, they've got great furniture. They've done it up in a really nice way. It's all great, but it's actually not that different, apart from that field at the back, yeah. from Parkside Park Cottages. Yeah. And it's £65,000 more, more expensive. That's and it true. wouldn't cost you £65,000 to make Parkside yeah. Cottages as nice, if not nicer, yeah. than this. So this is a no? No. It's a no? It's a no. We've got a no. Before the Shoe Hands deal starts to take shape, let's see what other properties are on the market this week. In the heart of Manchester's buzzing, fashion-focused northern quarter, this loft apartment is spacious and beautifully designed. It's on the market at £185,000. This duplex penthouse with its superb open views of Nottingham Castle and the park to the rear is spacious with a good-sized lounge and separate study. It could be yours for £184,950. In the historic village of Walkworth, this Grade 2 listed stone building boasts views towards the river and its own courtyard and balcony. The asking price is £150,000. This huge house has five ensuite bedrooms and two self-contained flats. Lying in its own grounds in Galloway, West Scotland, it invites offers over £165,000. And finally, this 18th century building in France is light and spacious with a south-facing mature garden. It could be yours for £145,000. Shortly before we all hit the sack on the final day, the phone rings. It's the estate agent on the line, and it looks like our bluff has worked. The other party has shown their hand first and offered £155,000. I'm told they won't be going any higher. Uh, the other couple are going to hold fire right. at, uh, at that level. Mm -hmm. Um, are, are we higher than them at the moment? You're, you're both at 105. Is, there a, is there a sum of money that would um, close it down entirely and well, avoid any continuing negotiation? Um, it's entirely up to you. But, um, mm. you know, I think there is scope to maybe agree something now. Uh, that you feel that there would be? I think there would be, because this other couple have indicated they won't go up. But I'll go and have a word to them now. Have a chat with them. And, and put that and across. And let me know. Yeah. yeah. OK. OK. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Yeah, Hi, team. Hiya. Hello, Phil. Hello. I was where you were. The other purchaser who wants the cottage is not, at this time, increasing their offer. We like the other purchaser at this point. Now, that's certainly no guarantee that they that won't. situation yes. will remain or that they won't do it. My reading of the situation is it's time to do the deal. Yeah. And to offer them, offer the vendor what they're asking. Asking price. Go okay. If you can do it. We're united. Let's do it. Brilliant. Thanks. Bye. How about that? Fantastic news. Fiona and James's offer on Parkside Cottages has been accepted. James and Fiona waited and waited for the vendor at Parkside Cottages to find somewhere to move to. But eventually, Phil and I had to advise them to look elsewhere. It's really important to set a time scale. Know how long you can wait, and when the time's up, be brave. Cut your losses and move on. The good news is that James and Fiona did find somewhere else, and they moved in yesterday. Join us in two weeks for our first time buyer's special. We'll be in West London with Yusuf. Can we launch him onto the property ladder in Britain's most expensive neighbourhood?
cold feet, am I doing the right thing, this is too much money for me, I'm not responsible enough, uh, I don't even have a credit card, or what am I doing with buying a house, it's like, oh my god, here I go.